a space game. And there are space games. Now, there's Gyrus, hot from the arcade. Nothing moves like Gyrus. In planet-by-planet planet galactic warfare, you're attacked by enemy ships, satellites, and meteors in a relentless search for Earth. Then more enemy ships, more satellites, more meteors. Now you can buy. You are the player. Gyrus, or the Clique Vision game system. I remember this game in the arcade and I absolutely loved it. If Galaga and Tempest had a love child, its name would be Gyrus. It's a tube shooter, similar to Tempest, but imagine Galaga's ships flying around in the tube. That's basically what this game is. You warp from Neptune to Earth, and there's like different warp levels you have to go, like for example, from Neptune to Uranus, I think it's like two warps to get there and then once you get there you have a challenge stage which like Galaga you try to destroy all the ships on the screen before they fly off to get maximum bonus points which I always loved that gameplay element in Galaga and I think it's really cool that you have the same thing in Gyrus. Another neat thing about this game uh, you get a power up to your ship's firing ability you know similar to Galaga you instead of having one shot you get two shots but here's the difference in Galaga, you had two shots in rapid succession that you could fire if you wanted to. In Gyrus, you get like a double barrel laser cannon, so it shoots two beams at the same time, which really helps in the challenging stages quite a bit. And like Galaga, the enemies will fly from the center of the screen out of the tube and around the outside and go back in the formation in the center, you know. And you got to try to shoot them before they get back down in there so you have less enemies to fight as they fly out at you. And they can be pretty insidious as you play the arcade game. They'll start flying around the sides of the screen where you fly, so you'll run into them. So you got to be really on your toes. Every once in a while, you'll see uh, this special ship come out. They'll give you the ability to collect that power-up to get a, a double shot. And also in the upper levels, you'll start seeing satellites coming out of the center of the... Uh, the screen that have these laser beams that bounce back and forth between them that you gotta try to, to, to destroy or avoid. Also you have asteroids or meteors that will come flying out as well. You gotta keep your you keep your eyes peeled out for it. It's a great arcade game. I highly recommend it. Uh, you know, checking it out. Uh, there was a really cool video put together that I found. It's a tribute to Gyrus. And it features this German rock band. I want to say their name was Sky. And they did a remastering or remix of Bach's Toccata music, which is the background music for Gyrus, to a more, you know, rock sound. And this YouTuber overlaid gameplay of Gyrus over this video of the band playing this music. And it's really cool to see. It's like a little tribute to the game featuring this German rock band from uh, 1980 in the background. I'll put a link down in the video description if you want to go watch that video. I, I really like it. It's pretty cool. So anyway, we're going to be talking about Gyrus for the ColecoVision. It looks just like the Atari 2600 box, except instead of a red stripe, we have a green stripe. It says, for the ColecoVision game system. Same artwork on the front, which I absolutely love this artwork. This part right here kind of reminds me of the ship from uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey. But I always dig the box art on some of these Atari and ColecoVision and television games. It really draws your eye to, to the cartridge, I mean to the box. On the back, shows a gameplay screen, pretty cool. It'll be one or two players, joystick required. What well, really been, really been cool is if they would have made a version of this game that used a spinner. Uh, you know, the arcade version used a joystick for right and left or two buttons. But it definitely would have been cool if it was set up to use a spinner control. I think that would have been really awesome. I don't have a problem playing it with the joystick. I just What I do is I just kind of rotate the joystick around like this as I play the game. And that, that seems to work for me. Uh, I know a lot of people have different ways that they play the game, but that seems to work the best for me. Nice little description on the back. Just give you a basic overview of the game. That's your warping from Neptune to Earth. 
avoiding uh, dying, of course. <laughs> Let's open up the box. So in the box we have our manual. It's black, white, and green. Shows how the fire buttons are used. It's very basic controls. And we got a little story in here. Three billion miles is a long way from home, but there's no shorter route from outer Neptune to Earth. As if that weren't enough, it's not. It's <clears throat> it's got to be a shootout all the way. You alone in your rapid-firing spaceship, swirling a circular flight pattern, orbiting to the right, arcing to the left, trying to mow down wave after wave of enemy plane formations, rocketing meteors, and runaway satellites. Stops at Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, or mark your progression towards Earth. Each one's a short visit, though, then it's off again to the next planet and the next wave of enemies. Reach Earth in one piece and maybe you think twice about leaving home, then again, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, it gives you a goal, you no know, warping from Neptune to Earth. And as you progress, you get different you know, bonus stages, you know, like Galaga, which is pretty cool. And it talks about the different enemies, the enemy plane formations. You know, in the early levels, they'll come out and not shoot at you, but in the upper levels, they start shooting at you as they come and flying out and go into the formation. You got the satellites that all appear. Uh, if you shoot the middle satellite you'll get the double firepower uh, boot up or upgrade then you have the meteors that come flying out of the middle of the screen then we have our chance days we have our different planets the music is really cool yes it was done by Johann Sebastian Bach's Toccata and figure have Toccata and Fugue in D minor Willie can't talk today get bonus ships at 60,000 points and every 100,000 points <laughs> and we got the scoring pretty awesome and also inside we have the cartridge itself classic Parker Brothers cartridge this one has a little bit of the glue bleeding through the label right here acti plaque it's a thing <laughs> but it's still a pretty cool looking cartridge No, I didn't have a clique of as you know, back back when they were really all the rage. I do remember seeing them at my local service merchandise, and I would play Donkey Kong on them or Smurf Rescue, that kind of thing. Never owned one. I got an Atari 8-bit computer, and that's where I played Gyrus the most, was on my Atari 8-bit computer. I did pick it up for my Atari 2600, because back then I was still collecting cartridges for my 2600, you know, particularly arcade translations. And... Uh, but I still come back to playing it on the Atari 8-bit whenever I play the game. Of course, now that I have a, a, click, a Collector Vision Phoenix and also a Coleco Vision, I play this quite a bit as well. It's a very good version of Gyrus on the home consoles. Anyway, that's enough yakking. Let's get to playing the game. Gyrus! All right. Of course, you've got to wait 10 seconds before we can play the game. As soon as we wait 10 seconds, we hit the start button here, or the fire button, and away we go. Do, 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 do. I love that background music. It's so cool. The nice thing about the background music is it gives a nice, uh, frantic gameplay vibe. It really keeps you engaged. Game programmers of the original arcade game, and they picked a good uh, piece of music to use as background music for this game. Now, anytime I hear that Tukata and whatever by Bach, this game always pops in my head. <laughs> I always think, think of Gyrus whenever I hear that tune on the radio. I mean, it's a really good game, you know, they did a good job with the translation to the Clique Vision. If you look at the ship, you can see it's got three different colors being used. So it looks really similar to the arcade ship. Unfortunately, the enemy uh, ships are all single color, which that's a bummer, but that's okay. The gameplay is there. Ooh, got a bonus. Destroyed all the ships before they have a chance to go. Ooh, watch out for the asteroid, dummy. 
keep forgetting about the meteors come flying out of that center of the screen. Ooh. Come on. Ooh. Ooh. Let's see if the satellites come out. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Thousand. I've made it to Neptune. Yes. Chance stage. All right, here we go. Let's get them all. Oh, yeah. Good. Perfect! 10,000 point bonus. Advantage Willy. I mean, while I played this game a lot in the arcade, when I got it on my Atari you did computer, I played it a bunch on my Atari on computer. Had I had a ColecoVision, I probably would have played it a lot on it as well. Even though I picked it up for my Atari 2600 you know, back then, I played it a couple times, a few times on the 2600, but mainly my go-to home console version was the Atari Big Computer version. There's the satellites. And I missed them. Such a good game. down the drain! Two warps to Uranus! I mean, control is really nice with the Cleco Vision controller. Oh, I almost got them all. There, right into the ship. Oh, you son of a biscuit! Just did a direct reversal. This took me out. Oh man, did it again. Really? I got to stage six. 45,000 points. Oh, man. That's so bad. I used to be pretty good at this game. Okay, let's, let's try it again. So I'm break, break 45,000 points here. Come on, come on, come on. Get them, get them, get them. If I get these ships destroyed before they go into formation, that's where I get the maximum points usually. I might hit the side of a barn. Oh, come on! I pretty much got a full formation of ships in there now. Yeah, come flying up here. Come on. There we go. I like the warp effect. Oh, yeah, don't sit there, dummy. Whoa! It's about ran into that meteor. You think as much as I play Gyrus, I'd be pretty good at it. Something. Oh, yeah, there's them too. Yay! Sign for the stand chance stage. There we go. Come on. We need my 10,000 point bonus. Yeah, there we go. Point bonus there. Oh, they flew into me again. These guys are 
big time kamikazes. Where's the satellite's gonna blow those guys? We can double shots, double shots. Yeah, there we go, double shots. Yeah! <laughs> Approaching my high score. Trying to break 45,000. And I died. Let's so hang on up here. Oh, well, a lot of good that did. I got meteors. the satellites. Looks like I got double shots back. Oh, I broke my high score. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah. Up to stage six. That's where I died last time. At least I broke my high score. One more you warp to Uranus. Oh, I should have known. Stay away from me. Stay over there. Oh, man. Well, at least I got the 48,300 that time. This is such a great game. On pretty much any console, it's it's a, actually a really fun game. Recommend giving it a try on the ColecoVision if you, if you have one or get the ROM using the emulator. It's a lot of fun to play. I pretty much prefer the Atari 8-bit version, which is, that's what I grew up on, besides the arcade version, of course. Anyway, do you have any memories of Gyrus in the arcade? You know, the first time you ever saw the game, what do you think of it? Uh, what do you think of the game now? What's your favorite home translation of the arcade game? What system do you like playing it on the most? Comment down below. I'm, I'm really interested. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. The Player. Charlie, Charlie. I play on Coleco Beach.